Hi, this is Federico with Cuddle, and in this video, I want to show you how to make a jigsaw puzzle out of wood using your own images and custom settings. First, we'll talk about the different materials we'll be using. Then we'll generate the print and cut files using Cuddle.xyz, which is a free web-based design tool for laser cutting. And then I'll walk you through the different steps, like placing the image onto the wood and getting it ready for cutting, and after that, the final cleanup. So let's get started. For the wood, I'm using this light maple plywood from Glowforge, which is about three millimeters or a bit less than an eighth of an inch. This is some 32 pound paper that prints well on my inkjet. And to glue the paper to the wood, we'll use some spray adhesive for even coverage. This is some white masking tape to avoid burn marks. And optionally, we can add a protective coating to the pieces at the end. So let's start by preparing our files. The first thing to do is to go to cuddle.xyz slash templates. You can also find the link in the top left corner. And here we'll find the jigsaw puzzle template and click on it to get started. So this page contains instructions and all the different steps we need to follow, including all the different files we need to download. The first step is to get a general overview of what the puzzle is gonna look like and to choose an image. So let's scroll down to that section. So to choose a different image here, we can go to the right hand side and click on choose image and grab one from the hard drive. And quick disclaimer, using images in Codal is a pro feature, but I think this template is very usable even if you only have the free version, so continue watching. This view is useful because we can make changes and then get a sense for what the puzzle looks like and where the cuts land. So if we want to make any changes like the number of columns or the number of rows, we can click and drag to get a different number and you can see how the preview updates on the left hand side. Or I can click and type a number that I want. So for example, if I want eight rows, I can type eight and I get a preview. And I also know the size of the final puzzle. I can look at the rulers here, so it's going to be six by eight, or I can look at the dimensions down here. Uh, another thing I can do is I can change the size of individual pieces. It's set by default to about one inch, which is, you know, roughly a standard puzzle size. But of course you can make it much smaller for uh, much harder puzzles. And you'll see how the size will update. Or of course you can make it much bigger for sort of kid size puzzles. And we still know the dimensions. Though for this example, I'm actually gonna reset all these sizes. So I'm gonna click on the reset button and I'm also gonna reset the default image. Another thing we could change at this point is the bleed, which is the amount that the image gets scaled past the final cuts of the puzzle. If the bleed were to be zero, then we'd have to line it out super precisely, which is fairly hard to do. So by, by making it a little bit bigger, then we ensure that those cuts line well inside the image. So I'm gonna leave this one as a default. And as you get more familiar with the process, you can play with it yourself. Now we can grab those three files that we need. So the first one is gonna be the PDF to print the picture on paper. So I'm gonna download that PDF by clicking there. Then the next file is going to be the blank. That's gonna be the blank piece of wood where I'm going to glue the picture. So for that one, I'm gonna download an SVG that's gonna go in the laser cutter. And then for the last one, I'm gonna download the puzzle cut. It's gonna be the final cut that's gonna have all those different pieces. And that's gonna be an SVG as well for the laser cutter. And now we are ready to do these operations. So here in the Glowforge interface, I'm gonna start by uploading the blank cut, which is gonna be the base piece where the picture is gonna get glued. And once uploaded, I'm gonna place this cut in the bottom left corner of my sheet to make good use of material. Here, I can actually check the precise positioning of this cut by clicking on this little ruler icon. And the numbers are very close to something like five inches and seven inches. So I'm just gonna type whole numbers, which are going to be easy to remember when I place the next cut in the following operation. So now we are ready to cut this piece. And I made sure the material was secured to the bed because when I remove the blank, I wanna leave that piece in place so we can use the hole to register the next operation. So I'm gonna remove the masking tape from one side of this blank 
And with this 100 grit sandpaper, I'm going to prepare the surface because this material comes pre-finished and it's very slick. I want to have a good surface for the glue to stick. And of course, at the end, we'll give it a good wipe and get it ready for the next step. Now we can grab that PDF file so we can print it. And one thing I had to pay attention to was that the scaling was set to 100%. After printing this picture with some high quality settings, I trimmed the edges so it fits perfectly on the blank. And the instructions on my spray adhesive said to shake it vigorously, apply it outdoors, and let it dry before you apply the piece that you're gonna glue. So I did that. And when it was ready, I carefully aligned my picture. I made sure it was perfectly flat and then place a sheet of paper so I could apply more pressure and make sure it was well glued. And the last touch was to place some masking tape on top of the picture to avoid burn marks. I roughly trimmed it and got it ready to go back into the laser cutter. And I placed it back into the hole it came out from, just making sure it was perfectly flat. Now back on the Glowforge interface, I'm going to select the previous cut and ignore it because there is no need to repeat it. And then I'm going to upload the last operation, which is the jigsaw puzzle cut. And because we had that bleed that gave us some margin of error, you can see that it would be possible to place this final operation by hand in case things move by accident. But because I remember the numbers that I entered, I'm just going to use those to be more precise. So it was five and seven. And now we are ready to cut it. It was really easy to remove as a single piece from the bed because the masking tape didn't cut all the way through. I only had to separate it by hand and then begin the process of peeling the masking tape on both sides of each piece. I'm using this little plastic razor to peel off the corners because my nails are not that strong. And I think this is the part of the project where your patience gets an opportunity to shine. I also tried this trick with some Gorilla Tape and I think it works okay, but I found the plastic razor just as reliable. So I just finished it with that method. Then I put it together one last time and finished it off with some protective coating. I really like the feel of these wooden puzzle pieces. They feel solid and nice to manipulate and durable. And I think the ability to make puzzles with custom images can make them into awesome holiday gifts. So if you found this video useful, you can help the channel by clicking like and subscribe. And please leave any questions and tips you might have for other makers in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching.